so today I wanted to give you uh, like a review proper review of the Dyson Supersonic hairdryer. So you have seen me using it a couple of times, I talked about it a couple of times and um, I've used it now for at least three weeks and I can tell you more about it. And um, if you want to see this hairdryer in action, I just did a video how I style my hair. I will link that video below so you can see this in action. But after that video, I've been getting so many uh, questions. Is it worth it? You know, what do I really think about it? So instead of answering every single question, I thought I'd just make a quick video about it. First of all, it is not yet available in the USA. I think it only came out here about two or three months ago, so it's very new. But I know for a fact that they will be making or already making one for USA. Um, how I know that is before we bought it, I wanted to know if this hairdryer had dual voltage so I could use it in USA or is it just for Europe? And I was informed that no, this is not dual voltage and they don't have in plants making dual voltage uh, hairdryer, but they are, go they are going to make one specifically, specifically for US voltage. So you will get that one very soon. Okay, first of all, let's talk about the shapes. I've never seen a hairdryer that shape and the shape was what really um, attracted me to it before I knew anything else about it. Because I blow dry style my hair three times a week and I am serious about my blow drying. I've spent so much money on hair dryers over the years. Um, my latest one was I think Babylis Boutique which was £100 and I wasn't that happy with it. it. It was very long, very heavy and that's what I don't like about hair dryers that the body of them is so long when you add the nozzle you have to hold your hair dryer so far away it really hurts your arm. Another thing that I love about it is where they've put the motor. So in the traditional hair dryers the motor is in ahead of it that's why it feels so heavy because when you hold it like that you can feel this weight here. This one has the motor in a handle and that rebalances it so, so lovely. I cannot tell you how comfortable it is to hold um, and it's very light. Um, let me tell you, it's not very, very loud uh, as hair dryers go. Obviously it's quite powerful so you still hear it. This was on the fastest um, speed so obviously it gets quieter when you turn that down. Another thing that I really, really liked about it was the controls, how they are made and how they are placed. So you know in most traditional hair dryers, the buttons are usually here or on the side and when you blow drying your hair and you're holding it, you accidentally can turn the buttons on and off and change the settings and that was always very, very annoying. You've got them here at the back of the hairdryer. You can't accidentally press them because when you hold it here, <clears throat> this on-off button doesn't press to turn it on. You have to slide it up or down. So even if you put your hand on it, it's not gonna turn it off. And obviously these you don't even touch, so you can never by accident change um, those settings. So as we're talking about settings, this is on and off button which I said you slide up or down. This is um, speed button and you won't be able to see it. I mean when it's off you can see it anyway but when you turn it on they have three LED lights and for the speed you have white ones and the, this button is for the heat settings and you have three red LEDs. So obviously one being the lowest heat, three being the highest and the same with the speed. So you just press these buttons, um, you know, to adjust it. And also you have continuous cold cool air shot button here which you press as well. But this one you have to hold. So that's how simple all the settings are. Now it comes with with a silicone mat to store it or to rest it on. It comes with two nozzles and a diffuser. 
This is genius. No other hair dryer has that. The nozzles are magnetic. I mean, why, why nobody else thought of that? It annoys me so much. You know, some nozzles are screw on, some are push on. Sometimes if you turn the hair dryer on the highest heat, it just makes the nozzle to fly off. And if you want to change the direction of the nozzle, you have to take it off and stick it back on. This just turns. So if I'm drying this side, I need my nozzle directed that way. If I'm drying it, if I'm drying it here, I need to change the direction. These nozzles are also cool to touch. Uh, they have heat shield technology. So you know, with normal hair dryer, if you've been blow drying for a while, you want to reposition the nozzle, it's really, really hot. This doesn't get hot. And you know, this is like, like a dream. Okay, so let's talk about the nozzles. So this is smoothing nozzle. This one dries hair gently with like a wider stream of air. So the idea is if you don't want to use um, any styling um, brushes, just want to dry your hair, then if you dry it with that nozzle, it will give you much smoother finish without, you know, if you're in a rush, if you don't want to use round brush and all that. Or I, I use it also to just roughly blow, blow dry my hair, although you can just use it with that. Depends what look you're going for. If you, wanna, if you want your hair very smooth, then you would always use a nozzle. Now, this nozzle with a much, much narrower nozzle is a styling concentrator. So this just gives you very narrow um, flow of air where you need it, which means that when you blow, blow in one section of hair, you're not gonna be um, dis disturbing the rest because this concentrates just where you need it. And then of course you have the diffuser, which is for curly hair, evenly distributes the heat without being, you know, too ferocious, gives you um, better definition. He also has negative ions, which reduce static. He has very, very long cord, 2.7 .7 meters, which is very long. It's like a salon um, hair dryer length cord. Um, and the weight is 659 grams, so just over half a kilo. It's light as anything, and I think it's not, maybe there are lighter hair dryers, but I think it's, it's not all about the weight, it's the way it's balanced. I think that's the most important thing. Oh, I didn't tell you about another feature that it's got like a built-in thermometer that's supposed to um, measure the temperature of the heat 20 times per second, adjusting the heat so it doesn't damage or burn your hair. I am not sure about that because um, if you watch me all the time and you've heard me talking about it for the first time, I've noticed after about a week and a bit of using it, my hair was very, very, um, felt very damaged. And I didn't know why because I haven't changed my hair care routine. The only thing I've changed was the hair dryer. I cannot say 100% that it was this or I just needed a trim because since then I've had a trim and I've been using the hair dryer and my hair looks fine. But what I think, even they say it won't cause you heat damage, I don't think that's true. I've got very fine, obviously chemically treated hair. And because this is so powerful, I just think I was using it um, too hot. I was using it like with all my other hair dryers because I want it to be quick. So I would use the hottest setting, the heat setting and the highest speed setting. And that's what I did with this. And I think because this dryer blow dries your hair so much quicker, you don't need to use the heat, if you know what I mean, to be for it to be quicker. So since my trim what i started to do if i use my this hair dryer at the back i use it on a second um on the middle heat setting and the middle speed setting if i use it at the front where my hair is like the finest and more more sensitive i use it on the first heat setting and still on the middle speed setting and since then, I've been absolutely fine. I think if you have fine hair and chemically treated hair, you, you should be very careful with any heating tools anyway. So, um, yeah, 
I've had no problem since then. I don't feel my hair um, looks damaged and obviously I've used it now for quite a while. So I cannot say that it was the hair dryer, but if it was, it was my fault because I was using such high heat on my hair. If you've got very thick and stubborn hair, then high heat would be fine. Okay, so that's the features of the hair dryer. And now you all been asking me, is it worth it? Because obviously we haven't talked about the price. This is the most expensive hair dryer in the world. This, well, I think, this hair dryer costs uh, 300 pounds short of a penny. So it is a lot of money, but it is revolutionary, totally different technology, totally different design. And, you know, if you use Dyson stuff, you know, it's all good. Now, is it worth it? And that depends. I don't think no hair dryer is worth 300 pounds. But if you've got the money, you are serious about your blow drying, then it is. And I absolutely love it. You know, I often tell you how much I hate blow drying my hair. I am actually looking forward to blow drying my hair now. That doesn't mean I do it every day because it's still a lot of work as you have seen it takes me probably half an hour to do my hair but I love it to me hair dryers are very important um, it's something that I couldn't be without um, you know if you just have hair that you never style or style very rarely then no probably it's not worth it if you just blast your hair and you go then you can do it with any hair dryer but if you are serious about it, I can honestly say that this is best hair dryer I have ever used. There's been good hair dryers in my life, but they are always too big, too heavy, too uncomfortable. It's like my favorite hair dryers used to be travel hair dryers because they are so small. But obviously the motors were not so powerful, the nozzles are usually not very concentrated. Um, they are not good for everyday use. So, to me, it is worth it. So you have to make this decision yourself. I can just tell you that I love it. It's the best hair dryer I've ever used. And to me, it's worth every penny. But, to me, like I said, no hair dryer is worth 300 pounds. It's a hair dryer. Um, but I can understand why it costs so much, you know, um, Dyson Engineering is one of a kind, so I understand why it costs so much. And also, maybe it will go down in price, I don't know. Um, or maybe he will sell the patent and other company will start making them a bit cheaper, you know, like with the bagless um, vacuums. Dyson was the first one to do it and now you can buy them from different companies and they are cheaper than Dyson. So it's really up to you, but you wanted to know uh, my, my opinion and tell you if I think it's worth it and I think it is. So, like I said, I will link below uh, the video that I just did. Well, I think I posted it yesterday, but I did it a few days ago. Because um, you will see I still have roots in that video and I've had my hair done now. Yes, but I posted it yesterday. So, if you want to see this hairdryer in action, you can look. I will leave the link in the description box. Also, let me tell you, this is my second day hair. Today, I've done absolutely nothing to it. I just brushed it, went like this and sprayed it with a bit of hairspray. I feel like because this hairdryer gives me such smooth look, you will see if you watch that video, it's almost like I never use straighteners on my hair because I feel with the hairdryer and the straighteners for my fine hair is far too much heat. So you will see uh, how smooth finish this gives you and I feel that's why the next day um, because my cuticles you know are closed in are very small that's why I think next day my hair still looks fine normally next day I have to do something different with my hair like curl it or whatever but I've noticed since I've been using this hair dryer my you know next day hair looks fine it looks good enough to 
you know, to not to do anything else with it. Okay, so that's how I feel about it. I hope this helped you in some way to make a decision to buy it or not to buy it. Um, thank you so much for watching and I see you soon. Bye.